depending on your perspective, the next piece of information could be good news or bad news. Once you get a grasp on one kind of leadership, are you done? No. Because not only do the people around you and the cultures you work in and the companies you are likely to change jobs, not only are those going to change, over time it's also the case that our concepts of, our expectations of, and our interactions with our leaders change depending on the larger culture, depending on the mix of people and the chemistry. So you're never done. Effective leaders are lifelong learners. They continue to self-assess, they continue to get feedback, they continue to look at their habits and decide whether they need to approve, they improve, they need to set, they continue to set goals, they continue to set metrics for themselves, and they continue to look around and say, am I affecting people the way that I intend to affect them? Is this who I want to be? It's not everybody else's responsibility for me to be a better professional. It's my responsibility to learn and seek that. So there's some ownership I think that has to be taken by each of us. Let me step back and, and give a real brief history of leadership. And it, it, it's sort of been a general tre trend that if you think about it, in the 1900s, early, it was born to lead. In the 1930s and 40s, it was managed to lead. In the 1970s, it was, uh, um, I guess, care to lead. And I think where we are now is thinking to lead. And I think that's a big difference between earlier models of leadership that were very trait-based. In fact, from this, the idea of servant leadership down, it was all, all about traits. And I think we've moved into this area where now it's about thinking, driven by values and, and, uh, and ethics and principles. And so when I think about what is it that makes somebody lead, I guess, that sort of idea. Uh, I do rely on the work of adaptive leadership along that line and also an idea that we've been tossing around in our heads on hacking leadership and the idea that, um, that we have to, to look at the problems and realize that whatever problems are in the organization, we probably don't have a solution for. Because if we had a solution, it would be in place. So solutions are not the answer. Um, when I think about leading, I think about knowledge and skills and abilities of people in the system and also their beliefs and their values. The professionalism has changed in the workplace a lot. It isn't quite as structured as it used to be. It's much more casual. It's much more friendly. Um, and I think that kind of changes the whole persona of it, of people being approachable. Um, so I think it's real important um, and to understand what the foundation of the skill set that I have doesn't change. It's always the same. The trust and the honesty and the availability to be there for not only the employees but the people outside of the organization. Um, because those potentially could be people that would be working for us. Um, I could be working for them in um, a fundraising situation. I could be representing um, one of the members of leadership in, a, in, a, in an organization. So it all kind of ties together. It's sort of kind of part of who we are. Um, and I don't see it as a separate issue. I see it all as the same person that I am. Leadership is for anyone, because anyone could be of influence on a system. And so people make up the system, and people interact by communication. So to me, communication is really a foundation for being effective at, at leading people or being of influence in a system. And so that's where, that's where communication lives. So when I think of leadership, I do think of it from a standpoint of, of a relationship that's mutually beneficial. And it, it has to be grounded in, in some sort of principle, some sort of ethic. And and real change has to be intended. So a lot of the work I do on leadership uh, comes from a few places. And one place in, in um, I guess, really in particular is from Marty Linsky and Ron Heifetz's work in, in adaptive leadership. And they spend a lot of time talking about leadership and not the leader. 
And one reason is uh, leaders are very few in number. If you look at an org chart, there's usually one. And so the idea that, uh, that anyone can be of influence on a system, then if we think about our definition of leadership and we think about that idea, it, it's about the people in a system. And so it's not by authority, it's not by position, it's not by rank. You, you can be of influence uh, laterally, upward, and downward. So when I think about leadership, it's, it's really thinking about the act of leading. Reputations grow and they're set, and they're also something that you can affect. So if you find that you've ended up in a situation where the way you interact is not who you are or who you want to be, work on changing it. Effective leaders are lifelong learners.